Hello, and welcome back to Lex Play. If you're new to my channel, hello, I'm Lex, and today I'm starting out here on the dream address for my complete island, Lorien. I'll leave the dream address here just in case you're interested in visiting, but today we're gonna talk about the path I use on this island, because several people have reached out to ask me how to make the path I use look more natural, or how I went about placing this custom path in order to get the look I achieved on Lorien. So I'm gonna show you Lorien's path as a reference, just to start. So this is the path I use. As you can see, I make it pretty winding. It goes here, it curves around, and I use it all over the place. I also use it alongside the stone circles like I have here. So yeah, I just have it winding around. And like I said, I use it all over the place, so you'll find it here. I just make it very natural, very smooth. So yeah, let's get into it. I'll head back to Lost Falls, my regular island, and I'll show you how I use the custom path. So I've replaced some of my autumn path borders to show you all this. I'm just going to replace them when we're finished with this tutorial. But these are the four main blocks. I've used the darker version. I think they match the stone path in the game. There are five total like this main path parts. I only use four on Lorien, so I chose those four to use here. But if you want more variants in your path, you can use all five. And then these are side pieces that you can use to make the path feel less rigid and more natural. In case you want to follow along, I will put the code up on the screen now, and I'll show you all the other codes that this creator offers, or at least all the ones on the first screen. So I'm using this area because it, like I can sort of wind my way through the trees. So I'm just gonna start with this path. This is how I personally do it. You can do it one block at a time, but I'm gonna do all the blocks I want to look like this, just so they're already down and I don't have to worry about them. So I'm gonna wind from here, around here, and down to here. That's the plan. So say I wanna start with this one. I usually do them in clumps of four since I use four of them, so these three blocks will be taken up, or I guess these three would be easier to see. These three blocks will be taken up by the other patterns. So let's say I do a different one here. See, now we've got a sort of winding path going. So now I'm gonna use a different one of the main bigger blocks, this one. And I'll vary where I place it too. This one is ready. Next, I'll use this one to fill in some of the empty spaces. So now I've got little paths of three here. Now I'm going to add the last big block, which is this one. And you can alter them however you want so that it feels more natural to you. This was just how I did it for the sake of the tutorial. You're going to make sure each row is too wide, two path, like two custom designs wide, like I've got here. 
This is a long line, but each one is two on the row. So this is the first row, second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row, sixth row. So now I need to add one here, one here, one here. And now you can see it kind of looks rigid, like it doesn't look as natural as it could. These are sharp corners. They don't look like a natural stone path. It looks like you're abruptly turning here and here. So that's what these smaller pieces are for. This one that I'm on is going to go in the blocks that have that corner, the upper right corner. An example of that would be right here. This is an upper right corner. When I put the stone there, that makes it smoother. It's a more curvy transition. It doesn't feel as sharp. We're gonna do that for all of the upper right corners. So now that side of the path is complete. Now I need this one, the lower left corner. These make it where you need a smoothing custom design on the lower left corner of this block. Do you see what I've done here? It's become much curvier, smoother. It's just a lot easier on the eye. It's not so sharp. I'll do the same thing here and here. And I only use two because this path is going in one direction but you would also need the other two smoothing parts if you were making the path go a different way. So for example, if I were to take and start here, here I'm just creating another path for us to look at. You also need at least two spots in order to use both of the smoothing pieces, the smaller custom designs, because if you were to just leave one spot here, like if instead of doing this, I had put this design here so that the path curves very sharply, I could only smooth one side of this empty space. So for example, just to use a different piece, we'll use the upper left. I could use upper left here. But this is still very sharp. It seems out of place. It just doesn't, I mean, you can obviously do whatever you need for your island and some paths are gonna be a little less smooth and concentrated. But if you want it to look natural and winding, this isn't gonna work because you need two spaces to smooth both sides of the turn. So I'll leave the upper left here. That's an example of where you'd use upper left. Also, this piece is especially good for this block. If you're gonna be turning this way, it's a good end point because it does lean heavier this way. So this side of this tile is going to be kind of geared this way. It kind of leads your eye this way. I hope what I'm saying is making sense. It's really hard to describe how I use the paths because I just kind of do it. But here's an example of lower right as well. So you saw over here, we used the lower left and upper right. Lower left, upper right. Over here, we used lower right and upper left. So it just depends on which way the path is curving. Over here, we went this way, but over here, we went this way. We went right over here and we went left. I think the path definitely looks better if you vary it a lot more than I have here, like if you make sure you're skipping spots and you don't have two designs right beside each other that are the same. But yeah, either way, I don't really think you can go wrong. This is just a really nice path. And then, like I was saying, you could only do one space here. If you have two, you can smooth them in both places, so it's a sharp curve. If you have a small area, you can curve sharply here but the path looks smooth all the way around. You've got smaller pieces on the sides and then the thicker rocks making up the bulk of the path. So yeah, that's how I used this path and I hope that was helpful. Um, I'll show you one more example of a winding path just to be thorough. 
So you're gonna wanna start with these main four blocks and I'll do it one by one in case that's more helpful for you than seeing me alternate like I did. So here I've got each of them placed down once and let's say I wanna turn this way. I wanna go more to the right with my path. So then I would alternate again and you just keep switching up which one you're using so they don't overlap. So boom, I've got this simple turn. Now I'm gonna need to add a second block to make the path thicker. You could leave it as one. I'll show you what that looks like. So if I were to place the lower left corner and the creator has labeled them. As you can see, it says dark stones, upper right. We're looking for lower left. So we know this is the stone that's gonna go down. So it smooths that portion. And now we need upper right. So as you can see, it also works for a single path like this. I'm gonna show you how to lay out the path like I've done and add a second custom design to each row. When you're turning, you're gonna want one of the custom designs to overlap with the other, like where you're turning from. So this is one column, I'd say. This is another. You're gonna need at least one space where they overlap, so I'll say right here. So this path. We'll have two rows right here. So now this path, if I were to just put the designs here, it would be a straight line. The path would be straight. But if I put them here, it'll be curving a bit, which is what I'm gonna do. So now this is how my path is gonna turn. This is where it looks awkward because it seems thinner here. And that's what these smaller pieces do. They fill that space. So again, we're gonna use lower left because this is the lower left corner of this square that was empty. Now this square is empty. The upper right is where it would meet the path. And yeah, now your path looks more natural. It looks like it's winding rather than sharply curving. And it would just look awkward if you were to put a full block here instead of these smaller pieces. Like if I were to fill this space with a regular block, it would just look funny. It wouldn't look cohesive. So now this specific row is thicker than all the others. And while it does bind them a little bit more, this still seems thinner, this diagonal slot here, it's still just not smooth. So again, the smaller pieces fill in these spaces. So yeah, I hope this helped I know I'm not a pro at explaining, it's really hard to explain how to use a path, um, but I hope this helped at least a little bit so you could see my process. I always do it the first way where I just went with one at a time, one custom design and made the full path that I was planning to make. But if you need to see it coming together as a whole, you can do like I did on this one and just make your path with one custom design in a row. But yeah, I just wanted to make this for you all because I've gotten a lot of questions about how to make this path look more natural. Only use the smaller pieces to fill in these corners if you decide to use this path. And again, if that's not your vibe, like feel free to go crazy with this path. This is how I use it to make it look natural on Lorien. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this tutorial helped at least a bit. Um, best of luck if you use this path on your island. I think it's truly beautiful. And before I go, here's Peaches. I hope you guys like the tutorial and I will see you in the next video.